Hi, my name is Malcolm and I'm a PSLE Science Specialist here at the Big Lab. Welcome to another episode of PSLE Science Made Simple. In this video, I'll be analyzing a past year examination question on the topic of electricity. I will also include this question to download for free by clicking a link in the description box below. So, let's get started. Question 36. Study the circuit shown in the diagram carefully. The iron ball was resting on two iron contacts. Now, whenever we see a question with electrical circuits, it's a good practice to trace out the pathways that electric current can travel. Now, since we know that electric current always travels from one end of the battery, we can start tracing out this pathway and have the electric current return back to the other end of the battery. Now, is this the only pathway? No, in fact, there is a second pathway which we can trace out in purple as shown in the diagram. Since both switches S1 and S2 are open, this would mean that there is a gap in both the blue and the purple colored pathways. Now, with that understanding, we can look at part A. What could be observed in the circuit when only switch S1 was closed. So when we close switch S1, is there an open or a closed circuit? We can see in this case, there will be a closed circuit with the bulb, which means electric current can flow through the bulb. And what would happen to the bulb? Yes, the bulb would be able to light up. And that's our answer for part A. Now, when both switches S1 and S2 were closed, the iron ball moved repeatedly from A to B and back to A again. Now, in part B, they want us to explain why did the iron ball move up and down repeatedly. So to answer this question, let's first take a look what would happen when both switches S1 and S2 are closed. In this case, when S1 and S2 are closed, would there be an open or a closed circuit? Yes, we can see very clearly that there will be a closed circuit with both of the pathways. And we know that when there is a closed circuit, this means that electric current can pass through both the purple and the blue colored pathways. Now, let's take a look at the blue colored pathway first. If electric current can pass through the bulb in the blue colored pathway, what would we observe? Yes, we should observe that the bulb would light up. So let's write down. The first thing we should see is that the light bulb lights up. Now, what about the purple colored pathway? Since we know that electric current can pass through the coils of wire around the iron rod, what would happen to it? Yes the iron rod will be magnetized and becomes an electromagnet. So we can write down that the iron rod becomes an electromagnet. Since there is an iron ball near the electromagnet, what will we observe? Yes, the iron ball would be attracted to the iron rod. And when the iron ball is attracted, would the iron ball still remain at position A? No, it will cause the iron ball to move from position A to position B. So let's write that down. The third thing we would see is that the iron ball moves from A to B. Now, since we know that the iron ball is no longer at position A, now, what do we notice at the iron contact? Immediately, we can see that there is a gap in the circuit. When there is a gap, would there still be a closed circuit? No, instead, there will be an open circuit. So let's write that down. At this point, we know that there will be an open circuit. And we know that when there's an open circuit, electric current cannot pass through both pathways. So, if electric current cannot pass through both pathways, first of all, what would happen to the bulb? 
Yes, if electric current cannot pass through the bulb, we would observe that the bulb does not light up. So let's write that down. The bulb does not light up. Now, what about the electromagnet? Once electric current stops passing through the coils of wire, what would happen to the iron rod? Yes, the iron rod would no longer be magnetized. So let's write that down. The iron rod is no longer magnetized. Now, when the iron rod is no longer magnetized, what would happen to the iron ball? Yes, the iron ball would no longer be attracted to the iron rod, which means, does the iron ball remain at position B? No, in fact, the iron ball would fall back down to position A. So let's write that down. So we know that the iron ball falls back to A. Now, once the iron ball falls back down to A, now is there still a gap in the circuit? No, which means now, instead of an open circuit, we have a closed circuit. So, we have a closed circuit and remember when there's a closed circuit, what will happen to the bulb? Yes, the light bulb will light up and the iron rod becomes an electromagnet and we see that this entire cycle will repeat itself. That is why the iron ball will initially move from A to B and afterwards it falls back down to A repeatedly. Now let's take a look at part C. What happened to the bulb when both switches S1 and S2 were closed? Now I know what some of you must be thinking. Ah, it must be the case where the light bulb lights up, mm, and that will be my complete answer. But is that what happens? No, remember, not only does the bulb light up at first, but after some time, what happens to the bulb? We see that the bulb no longer lights up. And remember, this whole thing takes place repeatedly. So if the light bulb is gonna turn on and turn off, and it's gonna repeat itself, what do you think will observe happen to the bulb when this happens? This means that the light bulb will switch on and off repeatedly. Just like how the iron ball moves repeatedly from A to B and back to A again. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you found this video useful, do give us a thumbs up. If you'd like to check out more videos by us, do click on the links on the right hand side. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos. Thank you and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!